I got on board on Friday, Vicky on Saturday, and today is Tuesday. <laughs> so one and a half. Yeah, one and a half. Yeah. And I'm the most recent one. Um, We learned a lot of species, yeah, so we learned a lot of new algae and sponges and moss animals mm -hmm. and corals and fish, so yeah, that's great. And also some new skills in freediving, so that's yeah, great. Yeah, really good. <laughs> you yeah. more comfortable, you stay longer, it's, it's beautiful for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> for me, the first day when I came on here was uh, I didn't know what I was doing, and so I wasn't comfortable just jumping in and helping and doing stuff. And uh, especially with the species and stuff, I was like, oh, I'll, I'll hang back, I'll do the easy things. <laughs> and yeah, since we started seeing more species and um, just doing more stuff on board as well, it's been a great learning curve. So I've learned a lot, and um, that was ultimately what I came here for. With my core experience with different creatures and stuff, because we don't have all of these in South Africa. So yeah, now I am smarter and hopefully <laughs> a little bit wiser as well. <laughs> Gain some new life skills. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like how to clean a boat properly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did a lot of molecular biology there and mi microbiology and then yeah I did my master's uh, my master's thesis in marine biology <laughs> so yeah and then the last year I worked as an embryologist So I'm studying environmental geoscience uh, and I'm currently going to my third year. Uh, so the whole marine biology is a new thing for me, but I'm highly enjoying it. I think it's really cool to sort of go outside my comfort zone. I loved how when we got off the boat earlier, 
you were like, we were saying, oh, we saw a bunch of new stuff. And she's like, yeah, the rock is beautiful. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm such a geologist. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's nice to have a geologist on board. Yeah. Nobody yeah. ever appreciates the stone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hi guys. <laughs> My name is Patrick. Uh, I was so lucky to join Project Monai for one week now. Sadly, I have to go tomorrow back home. Um, it was such a great time here. I learned a lot of different stuff. So, just to point out, I'm not a scientist. <laughs> we have some here, but I'm not. But still, it was. Uh, I'm actually a project manager in environmental uh, sector, and for me itself. Um, it was the work together with you guys was uh, incredible because I could really get in touch with what you're doing here and not only watching from afar, what I usually like to do. <laughs> and if you wanna, I mean, support uh, and yeah, conservation, I mean, marin maritime uh, conservation or whatever, you can not only sit at home and just donate stuff or whatever, you can easily also participate. And actually what um, Pina and Manuel and the rest of the crew of Project Manai is doing is exactly giving you the opportunity to do that. And that's actually incredible. So I'm really thankful for that. And well, <laughs> for now I can hand over also to a more <laughs> scientific part maybe. <laughs> Don't introduce it like that. <laughs> So, my name is Berle. <laughs> I am currently studying environmental geoscience, so also not very marine biology related. Uh, but for that reason, I have been looking at rock formations. <laughs> well, on the side, I've been learning a lot about new species and all of the marine biology stuff that comes with Project Minaya. But I've been noticing, and I did a tiny bit of research, that um, this region actually has a bit of like thrust tectonics. I have a theory, but it's not very, there's not a lot of proof to it, that <laughs> low expectations, <laughs> that um, basically where you've got layers coming down like this, there's not, so if you've got layering like this, right, and you're looking at this side of it, there's not that much erosional opportunity if you come from that angle. So you wouldn't have as much karst structures, which is where like the limestone erodes, and you've got like what we saw today, tunnels and stuff like that. You wouldn't have as much of that as if you have erosion head on to the layers. So for example, I don't know if Tawani's watching. <laughs> she is, okay. Um, the island that we went to um, one morning at 6 a.m. was not very fun because there was just nothing to see. And I looked at it later, and it was um, it was on like head on to one of these layers. So one of my theories was that you wouldn't have as much sort of diverse habitat because it's not eroded in such a way where it'd be possible for there to be shelter and. I don't know, like more, yeah, more opportunity for different sorts of species. So on one trip, on one uh, special bay, I um, recognized that, um, or I found um, the Flabellina uh, finis, and um, I found it in the evening, and I didn't find it in the afternoon. So I thought that it is uh, probably uh, nocturnal. My hypothesis was that Flavellina hafinis is a nocturnal organism. It is a sea slug without a shell. And um, so they have uh, rhinophores, so tentacles in the front, where they recognize uh, the taste and the smell. And in the back, they have 
um, horns and um, so they harbor inside a poison which they get from um, the food source and Flabellina gets uh, its uh, food from Oidendrio which is a uh, hydrozoa and um, it basically protects them from other um, enemies in the ocean um, yeah, and they are um, simultaneous herm hermaphrodites, so they can choose if they want to be a male or a female. So yeah, that's also really nice. Um, and uh, yeah, they are found um, throughout the Mediterranean Sea. Yeah. So to prove the hypothesis, I uh, went <laughs> the next day. I went. Um, diving again, free diving basically, and I found uh, the Flavalina piece again, so the hypothesis wasn't verified by now, but I just I have to say I found it just once in one day, so maybe Project Manaya with its further investigations um, can find out a little bit more, hopefully. But uh, what I can say is that there are some nudie branches uh, which are nocturnal. So, for instance, the, the largest uh, nudie branch is called Spanish Dancer, which is half a meter and in size. So, yeah. But um, it's interesting why they are present in the afternoon and uh, in the evening and not in the afternoon on the same place. 